Hello and welcome back to the Rust beginner tutorial on coding in crypto. So today we're going to be diving into options and also matching. So these are both honestly some of the coolest parts about Rust and I'll explain why. So the biggest concept here is Rust does not have null. So there is no such thing as null in the entire language of Rust. There's what's called none and there's a big difference. So Rust will actually force you to handle the possibility of a null value. If you watched the previous video on collections, you saw when we tried to pop a vector, there was errors being thrown because we had a possibility of there being no values to pop. Therefore, Rust was telling us we needed to implement an option. So, like I said, instead, we use options. Now, this is what an option looks like. But these come as part of the Rust language, so like you don't have to actually define this. I'm just doing it as a demonstration. So, and this is also kind of a good concept to grasp. This T here represents a generic, and that's outside the scope of this tutorial here. But in essence, think of this as like X and it's a function. So like you have an option of whatever you're going to pass in. It could be this value or it could be none. Right. And in the case of our vector, this would have been our vector pop. Anyway, this is what an option looks like. It's either some or none. So if you want to implement it, let's do a little option example here. It looks just like this. So we're going to go back to our already previously seen vector conundrum. And now that we've got this initialized here, we're just going to create a loop for I in zero five range and we're just going to try to do that same thing again right we're going to just try to print and we're going to try to pipe in vector pop whoops and you can see that we're going to see the same error we saw before but we didn't really read this last time so what's actually happening is this value that we're trying to pipe into the string to print out is actually an option it's not whatever is in our vector. So like here, our vector is a bunch of integers. This is an option. It's either going to be some integer or none, like we talked about. That's why when you saw it printed out, it looked like this. It looked like some and it looked like none. That's because we put this option filter on the print statement. And that just prints the actual option itself, like the enum, which we'll cover. But the correct way to actually do this is to handle that possibility of a none to handle that option that you're going to get back from this function. So what does that look like? How do we get rid of this? Well, how do we get our actual value really is the question. So what we want to do is we want to go like this. We're going to say let X equal. And so originally we want it to be equal to vector pop, right? Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to say match. Now this is the match keyword and this allows you to match possibilities within a value. So it's very similar to a conditional or if you're familiar with a switch case, but these are really slick, honestly. So check this out. We're going to match vector pop. And since it's an option, it has multiple possibilities. Like we know this up here is an option. It's an enum. We're going to do sum. And we're going to set up a lambda expression so you can just use whatever kind of representation you want for the value. Let's just use like val. And if it is some value, like something is existent from like something is returned from this, then just give us that. Give us that value. If it's none, give us a zero. Close that out. And then within our for loop, we're going to just do a print line. And now you'll see we can just use X. Sweet. So like I said, this is part of Rust's internal libraries. So you don't need to actually define this. So I'll just comment that out so you can see that. And then we're going to run this bad boy. We'll get open a new terminal. And we're going to slide into our project and do a cargo run. See, we get three, two, one, 
And now all of our values have been popped out after one. So we get this zero back. Sweet. Awesome. So that's literally options. That's just, this is what Russ wants you to do to handle whatever it is that might throw a none. And these are pretty expansive. Like you can create whole expressions in here and point to different methods and what have you. So definitely explore that a little bit. Now let's take a closer look at this match function because this thing is super nice. So let's create a new function called match this and we're going to actually pass in <clears throat> a variable called val and it's going to be an i32. And let's just expect a string to come back. Now all we need to do, all we need to return is the result of a match statement. So again, we're just going to use the match keyword. We're going to match val and we're going to say, okay, we know we're getting an i32, right? <clears throat> so what we want to do is say, all right, one, give us the string one. And then I'm just going to add this to my clipboard here. If it's two, give us the string two. If it's three, you know, three. And then the last most important piece of a match is you have to handle if it doesn't, like if you're using something like this where you're not matching a predefined set or a predefined enum, you're kind of creating your own terms. You have to have a use case for if there's nothing there, if it doesn't match any of the things on this list. And that looks like that. So in a lot of languages, this is referred to as like default or something like that. This is what it looks like in Rust. And we're just going to put not listed. It's not on our list of values. Cool. Let's test that out. <clears throat> I'm going to do a little function match example here to keep things separated. And we're going to print line. Good old print line. Match this. And we're going to do one. And I'll go and do each of those values. And then we're going to try four, which is obviously going to be outside the scope. So we're expecting to get this. And then we'll just go toss this down here and run it. Nice. We got one, two, and three in text like we wrote it. And then for four that was outside the list, we got back that not listed. So that's how match works. And like I said, slick, you know, this thing is super useful. There's not a lot of code to write conditionals and things like that. So you can easily see like how, how nice this really would be. Um, so definitely make use of this. And it comes in really handy working with enums, which we are going to cover next.